So Beyonce announced she's dropping Cowboy Carter on March 29th, and this is the cover image that was released. Well, people, of course, initially were hyped about uh, this album. Then all of a sudden, then the folks start talking. They started talking about what, why she went, why is she holding that flag and why is she wearing those colors? And they started going on and on. First of all, not realizing that the colors that she's actually wearing, uh, that's the Texas flag. And she, of course, is a native of Houston. Uh, daddy from Alabama, mama from Louisiana, but she's she's born and raised in Houston. Uh, and then you see her uh, again holding that flag. Well, it led to a lot of folk talking on social media about this. It led to others trying to educate people on the history of one black rodeos, educate them understanding the history of of, of country music and black folks in the South. Uh, and so I said, you know what? Well, we're going to have a conversation. It says others are afraid to have it so we can understand uh, all of this. And so uh, let's get into this uh, right now. Joining me uh, is the first African-American female rodeo announcer and the voice of the Bill Pickett uh, Rodeo, uh, Cynthia Villery from uh, Pearland. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, and of course, uh, of course, uh, from L.A., Margot Wade LeDrew, Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeos National Development and Sponsorship Director. Glad to have you all both. Margot, I'll, I'll start with you uh, again. A lot of these folks who ain't from uh, the Southwest and from the South who don't know nothing about black folks, rodeos, cowboys, horses. Uh, I'm seeing them comment. And so they really don't understand that the image that of Beyonce on the cover, you see that image at black rodeos all the time. Absolutely. Explain, walk us through that. Well, it's America. Number one, um, rodeo has always been around and a part of black culture. One in four black cowboys were black. And so a lot of people don't even know, Roland, that the name cowboy came because they called black men, told them to get that cowboy. So it was a derogatory term. And then once they started making the John Wayne movies and all the other things, cowboy became hip and it was that macho thing. And so then they started doing the cowboys and Indians and all the movies and people looked at cowboys in a different light. Uh, knowing that that name originated it from black men working on the ranch. And at Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo, we do the American flag because this is America. We also do our African-American flag because we are devoted to African-American cowboys and cowgirls. And it's important for us to show their history, what the flag means and their culture. Um, Cynthia, I, I want to go to you because um, f for those who look, I'm from Houston uh, and mm -hmm. uh, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is the largest in the world. Uh, we would always uh, we always remembered uh, the trail rides as folks were coming into the city, getting ready for the parade. And so it was look, I grew up in Clinton Park in Houston. It was nothing uh, driving down Fidelity Road and seeing black folks uh, coming up and down the street on their horses. Uh, so that ain't nothing new to black folks. And so but Beyonce uh, is showing that cover is what many of us grew up seeing. Absolutely, definitely. Um, I'm a third generation. So like I always talk about, it's in my blood. It's normal for me. You know, you can go up and down Cullen's, Scott Street or wherever, and it's normal to see somebody on horseback and not even having a trail ride. So having rodeos as large as the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo to having backyard rodeos are normal. And so with the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo, we have traveled and we're celebrating our 40th anniversary where we have entertained millions about the black cowboys, the black cowgirls, a culture that's normal. And going through this, oh my gosh, Roland, you wouldn't believe when we go to different cities, they're like, oh my God, you guys are real. Can I touch a horse? Can I touch a cow? I've never seen it. I've never seen real cowboys and cowgirls. 
And so for us to be able to do that over 40 years, going through what we went through and still pushing through and being the first among many things, um, you know, that says a lot. Um, I'm gonna go to a panel here uh, with, with the questions, but I, but I want to I, I go to Greg first. Greg, I know you got some book behind you dealing with this, so I mean, I, I'm just go. I ain't even go go one of that. It, but but I'm sitting here, Greg, and I'm looking at these folks, and they're sitting there going, "How dare she hold that flag? That flag, uh, what it represents?" Not realizing that black folks said. Uh, we built this damn thing and and the flag has represented a, a, a difference to us as well. Uh, and black folks have not been silent about that. Uh, and so we've always had a, a different pers- perspective when it comes to the flag. But you had black soldiers uh, who fought. And they just said, I fought in I fought for a country that did not love me uh, because the hope was for to love me. Uh, I, I'm sure you saw a lot of this back and forth on Twitter and other platforms. Greg, just share your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Roland. And yeah, you're right, man. I got books and books and books and books and books about this. I'm glad to see. I am glad to see the Pan African flag, and, and that's not an African American flag. You see one right there. The red, black, and green is the flag of Africans worldwide. So I'm glad to see that in the parade. Uh, Beyonce, uh, the people in the rodeo, and everyone in the entire world can keep that red, black, uh, red, white, and blue flag, as far as I'm concerned. But that's my personal opinion. And we all know that Beyonce and her husband are very good at uh, pantomiming controversy, but they're not going to get into any real controversy, I mean, uh, but they're going to make all the money. So I'm not mad at Beyonce. She has perfected that. If the hive wants to come from me, uh, please do. Now, as it relates to that relationship, you're absolutely right, Roland, as our friend and brother Gerald Horn reminds us, and even in the latest in the book, The Counter-Revolution of 1836, you know, Black men got involved in the military because it was a way to fight for liberation. More black people fought for the British and or ran away than fought with George Washington. We joined the Civil War because we fought our way out of enslavement. And as and, and as both of uh, our guest sister, Wallery and sister LeDrew have said, when we see the cattle culture of the West, we understand that African people were there not because we chose to get on boats where we had all of those cultures in West Africa, but we brought those techniques with us. And in fact, these Europeans, as they were displacing the Native Americans, Gerald says we were on the wrong side, by the way, but it was our only choice. Now, when they had a choice, they went into places like Nacimiento, Mexico. They went and left the United States of America. Our fidelity is to our communities, and it's complicated, whether it be Juneteenth, all of these things. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested... And hearing y'all's thoughts about this complicated relationship between people of African descent in a settler state, because they're displacing the aboriginals, and we had a different relationship with the Indians than they did most often. You know, lately they've they've, they've, they've fictionalized it with uh, Bass Reeves, but I mean, there's some of that. And also when it comes to Beyonce finally in country music, you know, I'm from Nashville, where the great D. Ford Bailey lived, who was the black man on the stage at the Grand Ole Opry. When I think of country music, I think of the banjo, an African instrument. I think of the elders who trained everybody from uh, Mabel Carter to Johnny Cash and, and Little Bill Dickens and all those pick- those pickers. And I think about the, 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 the sound of Africa in country music, the blue notes, the songs, the lyrics about love and loss and community. How do we how do y'all think we should grapple with this very complicated legacy, which isn't really as far as I'm concerned about patriotism as much as it's about self-determination? And when people try to claim it, how should how should we represent ourselves in this tradition, which isn't a kind of monolithic tradition? Do you have some thoughts on that? Well, for me, just to say in reference to country music as a whole, it did come from black people have always done country music. As a matter of fact, when Bill Pickett started in 1984, our late founder who passed away was a big concert promoter. And so he knew the value of music and all types of music. And from day one, when the Bill Pickett started 40 years ago, we introduced black country singers all across this country because it was important and it was a part of our culture. And so we've always done this. And a lot of people don't even realize we've had Herb Jeffries that came to, has been a part of our rodeo when he was alive, performed, been a part of it. And of late, Money Long, who's one of the number one R&B pop singers now, when she was Priscilla. She performed at the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo in 2018 when she introduced her colored album. And every uh, there have been so many 
artists that have come through the Bill Pickett Rodeo because we were the ones that gave them the opportunity to be able to show their, their talents, to, to sell their CDs, sell their tapes at our rodeo. It was the same thing. I just have to do a little bit of history here. When Bill Pickett started in 1984, our cowboys were not really allowed to do any of the other competitions because they didn't have the funds, a lot of them. They weren't let in. And a lot of people said that they didn't have the talent. Well, Lou started it because he wanted to make sure that people knew the history, number one. Number two, to showcase and give our African-American cowboys and cowgirls an opportunity to learn, hone their skill, and show people all over this world that there are real black cowboys and cowgirls. And so we didn't go to the Texas and the Oklahomas and all those. We went to the urban, <laughs> the Chicago's, the Atlantas, you know, places where our little black kids never got to see a real black cowboy or cowgirl. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Cynthia, you wanna uh, go ahead, Cynthia? Yes, I'd like to circle back because we've had artists like Miko Marks from the Bay Area. But when I started, I've been with the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo 37 years. We had Jay Mason, who used to come to the rodeos and sit up there with his guitar and sing before we even had cassette players to play music. And he would sing live and travel with our rodeo from city to city. So introducing a culture we've always had, right? We always have. We've always made it important when it comes to the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. Mm -hmm. Racy. Mm -hmm. And one, one thing, I'm, Martin, I want to say real quick. Yeah, go ahead. You know, most people never even knew that the steel wrestling event that they do in all rodeos was created by a black man. William Bill Pickett, until Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo started in 1984, and we started educating people, then all of the other rodeos had to then tell the truth, because they could no longer just act like it was a, just a regular event. And so he was the real, true epitome of a cowboy. Mm -hmm. Racy. Yeah, I'm curious to see how people can watch these events or if there's any kind of documentaries or movies about this where people can get more well-versed because now social media rules all right. So if it doesn't hit social media, people don't know what's happening. So that's what I would like to know. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I am the social media director also. So okay. I make sure we're on every platform. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok. There's videos, there's pictures, there's history, not just Bill Pickett, but other history from other cowboys and cowgirls that we make sure that we educate across. Because throughout my life, because that, like I said, I'm a third generation. Those past generations haven't been captured. They're just mm -hmm. stories that have been told over and over. And so my goal is with the Bill Pickett Invitation to Rodeo, I'm starting my first podcast. And it's going to talk about the Cowboys, Cowgirls, about the judges, about the announcers, about the black um, stock contractors, putting them together in a book that we can ha hand over and create a legacy with. And also so people can understand this is deep rooted because our stories are told always say in pockets, maybe here in Texas, maybe in Oklahoma, maybe here. You don't have to be a star that's in the major rodeos to be good at your craft. Mm -hmm. But those are the ones that have brought in, mentored, made a change, set records to where our cowboys and cowgirls now are achieving even more. Mm -hmm. And we also, you asked about seeing, we are now have a residency show at the oldest rodeo arena in the United States in Cowtown Coliseum. We have six more shows there, three dates. If they go to Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo .com, all of those rodeos are live streamed on Pluto. So they're able to yes. tune in to see the rodeo. And we actually were able to partner with the PBR. And for the first time in 2021, we were able to have a black rodeo aired on CBS on the same day that Juneteenth became a national holiday. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. All and right. then also to add to this, you know, besides being the first to be on CBS, okay, 
the first African-American rodeo to be in Las Vegas. And we've been there three times. We've also had the first traveling museum that captured at the time 38 years of Black West history that the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo created. So we have put on platforms over and over to make sure that we educate, reach out to those so they can understand the Black Cowboys, Black Cowgirls, and what Black rodeos actually are. And that's one of the things that Lou wanted to stand true to is that you had to have some part of African-American in you to compete in our invitational rodeo because we weren't in the history books. We weren't in the movies. You know, we, we weren't there. So he wanted to make sure we had a platform where our story could be told. And Roland, you guys may not know this, but we now have a female president, producer of this rodeo. Mm -hmm. This is a white male dominated, dominated industry. And yeah. when her late husband passed, she took it over. She changed the dynamic. This rodeo is run primarily by African American women. And we have taken it to another level. Mm -hmm. And we are just excited to continue. And we are in the process of planning, teaching, training young ones underneath us so that we can continue this legacy. And when we're gone, that people can look back and see the history and the rodeo and what was created to educate our people. Uh, Lauren, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I got to counter Dr. Carr a little bit. Uh, Dr. Carr, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying watching a black woman on a white horse with a big flag looking powerful <laughs> on the on a record cover. I mean, I, I love it. I think it's great. I'm thoroughly enjoying everybody complaining about it, everybody bitching about it, because at the end of the day, it's a power pose. That's what this is. It's a new John Wayne pose. It's an update to all the powerful cowboys we had to watch when we were kids. And she has updated that. And and then take in the flag of the country and use that as a prop. I wish she had a sword in the air and with like money flying in the air. <laughs> then it would be completely perfect. Uh, and I just want to ask the lady. <laughs> I, I just want to ask the ladies: Do you think you'll see a spike in in uh, attendance as a result of her her sitting on this horse and, and blowing? And you know the album is going to blow up. It's going to totally blow up. So I wondered if you've had any contact with Beyonce's people. I mean, I wish she would pay tribute to people like DeFord Bailey and uh, and Leslie Riddle. Leslie Riddle is the guy. Well, well, but, 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 yeah, but here's the deal, Lauren. We don't know. She's already said there are going to be some surprises on this album. So, right. we, so, we, so we don't we don't know who's going to be featured. And True. and and look, here's the deal. Ever since she dropped Texas Hold'em uh, in 16 Carriages, you've seen a number of people now highlight other black country artists. And you see right. folks go back and actually talk about the history. Uh, and, uh, and I do think, I think Leslie Riddle is gonna come up in that conversation. We've also seen a lot of white folks on TikTok dancing to that first song in cowboy hats. So I think it's gonna be a big success. So ladies, I just wonder if you think you're gonna see an uptick in activity in, around what you're doing. For us, the last three we years, sell out our rodeos. we have we, sold yeah. out every performance. Right. Where this year we're adding additional. Good. When so it was during COVID right. and we could not rodeo, our right. social media pages continued to grow. Absolutely. Because we didn't stop. We continued to educate, continue to letting everyone know who we are. Mm -hmm. We still had people calling us for Zoom calls to be able to educate in schools and everything else. So mm -hmm. our book is based on our history for 40 years. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. And what you'll see is we Bill Pickett has some surprises for you guys coming very soon. Mm -hmm. That's all we can say. We are the first for everything. We're the one, the only and the original all black rodeo, the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. We don't follow people. We do things first. So we have mm -hmm. some surprises coming up our sleeve when we hit June. And so we just want people to stay tuned. And I think what Beyonce has done is just open the doors for people to start recognizing those country artists who've been here all along, that they did not give them a chance because they've always been here. Well, I, I just hope that again, that in all of this, people, first of all, learn the history of black people. 
yep. learn the history, <laughs> learn the history of black cowboys, learn the history of uh, black uh, folks in country, learn the history of black resistance, uh, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people are just commenting, uh, not knowing what the hell they're even talking about. Uh, and uh, and, and, and I, I'll say this here. We, we, we actually tried to get this. Don't go to yet. We tried to get this uh, into into our studios, but we literally could not fit it in the elevator, in the hallway, or in the window. So a lot of people who saw my show, Washington Watch, probably rarely ever saw this because it was on the outside wall, excuse me, on the wall to my left. It wasn't our main set. But when Washington Watch, when TV One, we ended Washington Watch in 2013, uh, this, piece was this piece was delivered to my house. And I own a lot, y'all can go ahead and go to my iPad, I own a lot of art. Um, mm. And this is actually, this was not an art piece. This was actually a part of the set. But what y'all don't see, so the person who designed this as a part of the set, what you will see is they infused images of prominent African Americans into the U.S. flag. And so you can see here, uh, you see Muhammad Ali, uh, you see Marvin Gaye, uh, you, see, uh, you see folks there uh, when it comes to voting. But what you also see here is that in the 50 stars, they also infuse the images of other African Americans. And so uh, you'll see uh, a young Michael Jackson, Coretta Scott King, Richard Pryor, uh, Frederick Douglass. Uh, damn, we should have replaced that Ben Carson. Uh, but uh, you see Oprah, Sidney Poitier, Michael Jordan. Uh, you see Dorothy Height, uh, Max Robinson, uh, and on and on and on. And so, uh, and, and I've said this here, uh, there's a lot of stuff that, that, look, it can get so, one, this would never get sold by me because one, this was on the first show I ever had. Uh, so that's one, but this art, this piece to me blows away every other art piece that I have. Uh, and so for folk who have a problem with the American flag, I, look, I understand all your, your stories, all the background, uh, but what I do know is black folks, we made this thing real. And as King said, we gonna make y'all be true to what you put on paper. So um, I look forward, so when is the, so you said the Bill Pickett Invitational, um, I'm on your website right now. So how many cities are you in? Uh, is, I see Memphis, Oakland, LA, and Atlanta. DC, and we have our survivals. Mm -hmm. Say it again. I, which has already happened. And we also have um, four dates so, in so when, Fort Texas. So when, when are y'all so in D.C.? The third weekend in September. Third weekend in September. Uh, but you kick things off. Uh, when, when do things kick off? What's the, what's the first date? It was in, we in uh, January. We did um, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Rodeo in Denver. Got it. So when's your next one? We had a black, well, our next rodeo is coming up in Memphis on the 13th. So we will be in Memphis. And then Thir from there. Thir 13th of April. what? 13th of what? April. Got it. April. So, yeah. so, so Memphis, April 13th. And after that? We're in Fort Worth. When? The 18th. April 18th? Of May. Of May. Okay, May 18th. May then 18th. Then we're in Los Angeles and Oakland, the second and third weekend of July. They're back to back. We do a two week run then. Okay. Then we go to Atlanta the first weekend in August. Then we're back in Fort Worth um, the third weekend. I think it's the 20th of August. Then we do our finals in September. Okay. All right. So we then. also have our Juneteenth rodeo in Fort Worth, Juneteenth weekend. Okay. All right, then. Well, look, I I'm going to have to stop by one of those. Uh, I'm gonna bring I, I'm gonna bring Greg with me. I know he can wear some boots with a dashiki. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the young lady asked about um, the Beyonce's family coming out. Well, you know, Glenn Turman has been the grand marshal for the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. A lot of people may not know that for 38 years. And he's very close to the Carter family. Well, well in fact, uh, fact, in fact, in her video, in her video that dropped for Texas Hold'em, right. uh, he's in the video. 
Absolutely. And Tina knows the mother comes to the rodeo quite often. She loves it. Uh So, and we have a lot of people that support uh, the Bill Pickett. So we're just happy that we have been able to survive Roland for 40 years. People said nobody would ever come to a black rodeo. They weren't going to come. They wouldn't see. And we've proved them wrong. And now being in Fort Worth, our rodeos sell out more than some of the other rodeos. And so because people come from all over the world, because in Europe and Spain and Italy, we meet them at the rodeo. They've never seen black cowboys and cowgirls before. Mm -hmm. And Bill Pickett also had a art gallery show that was done by some photographers in the streets of Paris. Well, uh, Glenn Turman is the biggest cowboy in uh, Los in Hollywood. In Hollywood, uh, he's, he's invited me to to go riding with him. Uh, I just saw him Saturday at the NAACP Image Awards. Uh, right. Yeah, and he was dressed. Come on, guys, go to my iPad. And he he was he was he he was dressed accordingly, uh, and that was him at the Image Awards. And so uh, that's always Glenn. So uh, look forward to uh, dropping in. Look, I got a. Uh, I, I got about 14 pair of cowboy boots and a few hats, so uh, I'm sure we can rock it at one of them. So we appreciate oh, we we'll appreciate to have you. All right, we we'll appreciate y'all joining us. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, man. All right, yeah. Now y'all, I know all y'all watching. Y'all want to see Greg and Dashiki in cowboy boots. I know y'all do. I know y'all. Uh, I had cowboy boots, man, as a kid. No, I'm from Nashville. That's why I say I, I, I ain't got no smoke for Beyonce. But let's be very clear. Beyonce done gone from the marching band, of course, Texas Southern. She grew up there. She'd been Yemi Ya and Oshun and Lemonade. She's a blackest king. She pan Africanist. And now she's a cowgirl. Beyonce is Beyonce. As she said in her quotes, this ain't country music. It's Beyonce. And let's be clear, having listened to Texas Hold'em a number of times, it's the difference between country music and Beyonce song with some banjos. But let's be clear, that ain't the point. Beyonce is trolling everybody. I agree with you, Lauren. Now, I, I draw the line at, at that funky flag because I guess we're all going to find out whether or not you can really troll a white supremacist system that at the end of the day may be mad because you wrapped yourself in that flag. But at the end of the day, if they still got the power, who cares? Well, she did say it's not going to be a country album. It's going to be a Beyonce album. Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. but, yeah. but. I absolutely would love to see her win all them damn country music artists CMA awards after they crapped on her six, eight years ago and just roll up up on that stage. That'd be good. That'd be good. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney, and you cannot afford 